and welcome back to this week's series of Realism Tips. This week we are going to be covering scavengers and scavenging. So I've got a little carcass here, pretty perfect size for my velo, who I would say is probably a prime example of scavengers. There are some others that are scavengers, but velo is probably the best known for it. Uh, they are small, lightweight, and quick. And this is pretty true of most scavengers. In comparison, larger predators, my cat's trying to play the game, larger predators would rely on strength or numbers to keep a carcass. Scavengers would try and rely on their speed and wit to get a carcass or even just a little piece of it. So where a rex may challenge outright for a meal, a velo may run up and grab a piece and then run away. Velos would try and go for security in the same sense, so for a larger carcass than this one, they may stay at it and eat, but more likely than not, they would take a small piece that they could manage, such as a bone or leg, or I guess in this case, just the entire thing, since that's what I can manage to carry, and take it away to a secluded area. It could be under a rock shelf like this, or especially for animals that are very dexterous and very good climbers, such as Pteranodon and Velos, which are currently our main scavengers. They may go to a high up place where animals such as a Rex or an Acro or anything that they may be stealing from could not reach them to eat their prize and more security. In real life, scavengers don't have a body down rule to keep them safe from any competitors, so if a larger, stronger, scarier predator comes along, they wouldn't necessarily give them any warning. So to prevent being ambushed, it's usually better to just take a little bit away from the main meal. This will also just prevent risk of injury as a whole as well. In that same sense, you can rely on your own hunting prowess to grab this little bit of meal, or, and what makes more sense, you could follow a larger predator, such as an acro or a rex, just to see what they are able to find, and you could steal pieces away from them instead of having to hunt it for yourself. It could be smaller carcasses like this one, or if they chose to hunt another player for a larger gore, then even if they don't win, you could still end up with a pretty sizable meal if you get my drift. Uh, whether or not that Rex wins or loses, if a body drops, you've got some meat. So it really behooves small scavengers like Velo to follow any sort of larger animal and to take full advantage of their hunting in any capacity. So scavengers as a whole will have some pretty tough stomachs to digest not so fresh meat. Carnivores as a whole will have pretty intense digestive systems to take away any disease or rottingness that may come with a meal in a carcass. But scavengers will especially have this because they are going for the not prime cuts. You can reflect this in your own gameplay by choosing the scavenger trait and investing points in there as this will prevent and mitigate the amount of discomfort associated with eating rancid carcasses. So basically the more talent points that you have invested there, the more you are able to eat without risk of causing sickness to yourself, which especially on a map like Titania can be very detrimental. This will also help in the event of just generally finding spawn carcasses that aren't very fresh where other carnivores may turn up their nose and soon be like, um, that's not really super fresh, I can't eat that. You as a scavenger can take full advantage of that and eat that to your heart's content. Scavengers as a whole will be likely to investigate any carcass that they come across, whether or not it has meat on it like this, as there may be some remaining tidbits that they may not otherwise find. So this bone is pretty empty like that, then there may still be some meat on it. As you can see, it's still emitting a smell. It's not a lot of meat, but there is something there. And generally speaking, scavengers are more likely to pick off meat from the bones. Even if there's nothing actually on it, you can still go up to an empty bone pile like this one is now. 
double tap E, and you'll still have the eating animation. So you can use this to kind of mimic picking off that last little bit or even trying to break off a bone. Bones in general can be a pretty high quality item. Small bones can be used as toys, such as the legs that come off of larger carcasses. Also act as like a chewing substance, so if there's something you need to clean your teeth off on, you can actually gnaw on something like a bone to pick clean. Or even some animals that are still teething could use larger bones as a means to kind of ease that soreness that they'll have in their jaws. Scavengers in general too, especially if they have larger powerful jaws, could go up to bones and they could break them open for their marrow. So this is a pretty good size for me as a velo. I could probably realistically break one of these bones. So you can simulate this by biting at the carcass that is empty or by the eating animation as a whole too. Uh, especially for something that's very powerfully drawed, like a rex, you could bite into a larger bone if you actually had a leg that size to simulate getting at the marrow or you could go for the carcass as a whole too. Um, really, it just depends on what you have available to you and what you can do. Generally, picking at a carcass like this can be a very realistic way to emulate scavenging or breaking apart the last little bits of the carcass, since in real life, very little of a carcass will ever go to waste. Okay, now let's say you are actually the one that is being scavenged from. Let's say we are a very large rex. Our little gore here has kept us nice, fed, and happy. Maybe we got a much bigger gore, such as an Apatosaurus, and this is keeping us fed for days. So, in this sort of circumstance, when you have more than enough food and you are comfortable sleeping because you are that well fed, in general, you're not going to be enacting upon one lone scavenger that may be coming for your meal. If you're at the point where you are that fat and fed, you won't notice a single velo sneaking up on you. So please bear that in mind when enacting on other players' experience. Most animals will not wake up to such small things coming by them. They will rather be ignorant of it and sleep. There's a few different ways you can kind of mimic the unawareness of being to sleep that would be fair to another player. You could zoom in on a singular point, and if something happened to pass you by right there, then it could actually maybe be enough to wake you up. You could set your gamma very low and just see what you see. You can set your gamma low by typing in chat. Gamma zero, for example. Well, I can't see anything at all now if something was sneaking up on me, I wouldn't know. That's a high risk, high reward thing, but it is something that you could feasibly do. The default is usually two or two and a half, depending on your computer and your settings, uh, just for a bit of reference there. Or you could just act it out and not notice something that's coming up behind you if it's trying to be stealthy. Something large that's stomping and being very obtrusive, you may wake up to. But for the most part, a single solitary scavenger you wouldn't necessarily see. So it's just something to bear in mind when making sure you're giving the best possible experience to another player. Of course, too, if you are stealing a carcass from somebody, do bear in mind that you're doing so at your own risk. So if another player were to catch you in the act of stealing, they could totally just bite you and end your life immediately without having to three call. So you are entirely scavenging at your own risk. Alrighty, well I hope that that was informative to you all. Scavenging is very, very fun. It's very risky, but there's a lot of ways I can go about it and enact upon it in a very realistic manner and get to enjoy yourself in the process. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask us in a Discord, especially in acting questions. That is a great resource for this. Don't be afraid to ask questions in the comments as well, as I'll be reading through those, and I'd be happy to help you out there too. Rules are always in flux, so this is just what is accurate at the time of my recording this, but in general, these are some pretty good tips and tricks to think on. 
Okay, as always too, we cannot continue doing the realism tips without your input. This is just a little bit of a guide for myself in this case, but we will always be taking your guys' tips and tricks first and foremost. So if you do have any that you've noticed as you play, even if it's scavenging, please don't hesitate to leave that in the Google forums and Discord, as I will be reviewing those regularly, and topics may be revisited in the future just as things change or as things get added. Thanks all, and have a great rest of your day or night.